all the participants i wish to now give a small uh, introduction to the resource person and um, dr dange is working for education social equality and women empowerment uh, he is an educationalist an excellent speaker a great critic and writer an inspiring teacher uh, he was born and brought up in gulgar gulbarga karnataka he completed msc psychology from university of madras and pursued a masters degree in education at the gulbarga university he also holds ma sociology from karnataka state open university mysore he has also qualified the net and slet in education dr jagannath ke dange working as an associate professor in department of studies and research in education kuvempu university he has already 3 years of teaching experience at the teacher training institute and 2 years of experience in government secondary school he has done phd on highly innovative educational technology thrust area keeping in view computer assisted instruction for secondary students for the first time in india sir was also the director of center for ambedkar and buddhist studies and also coordinator of health education programs and advisory board member for career and counseling cell academic advisory council member for school of education internal quality assessment cell and scst cell at kuvempu university so his teaching and research institutes include instructional technology learning technology by learning educational research and statistics so he was also the member of curriculum development committee for two year bed teacher education program constituted by higher education council karnataka and oriented the teacher educators of the karnataka state dr jagannath dange carried out a major research project on the very innovative topic mobile learning at teacher training institutes his contribution includes a newly developed theory of contribution wherein he described an individual's contribution at five different levels his contribution is significant in the development of theory of success too so his contribution includes step learning experiences model in which he has listed 17 varieties of learning experiences which may be used in the teaching learning process and sir has developed a life skills model based on the world health organization proposed 10 life skills sir has published nine books and developed blended learning material for b ed course first time in india in collaboration with commonwealth of learning canada sir has published 224 research and conceptual papers in reputed national and international journals and magazines dr jagannath dange is a columnist and writes articles for newspapers sir has presented more than 100 papers at numerous national and international conferences and seminars sir is also working as international peer review committee member for 11 international online journals ugc listed journals and advisory board member for couple of international journals sir has worked as honorary advisory board member and reviewer for many international conferences around the globe and served as a resource person selected by higher education council of karnataka and delivered special lectures on different themes of higher education to the newly appointed assistant professors in colleges and universities sir also delivers special lectures for net and kset aspirants sir has so far delivered 248 special lectures on different themes of teaching learning evaluation and paradigms of education teacher training indian constitution human rights dr b ambedkar's ideology and buddhism sir has conducted workshops on how to write articles for research scholars and teachers and on educational technology at grassroots levels for teachers using technology for teaching sir has the experience of conducting special lectures on educational research for researchers teachers and teacher trainees sir has attended the international conference organized in kuala lumpur in malaysia sir has conducted special sessions for bala mandira children special children in government centers corps of police department and teachers at all levels and students of different categories sir has chaired the national and international conferences district research advisory committee member of diet shimoga 
visited many government primary schools in shimoga district and provided valuable suggestions to improve the quality of education being a health education coordinator sir has organized free eye testing camps and blood donation camps and awareness programs for the university students and staff from the center for dr b r ambedkar and buddhist studies sir has also organized close to 40 programs and special lectures in kuvempu university and undergraduate colleges of kuvempu university regarding indian constitution and ideas of dr b r ambedkar dr jagannath sir was interviewed by doordarshan tv chandana bangalore um, on 2nd september for the program was retelecasted in every next month he also participated in all india radio programs from bhadravati station and given talks on the themes personality development life skills and how to face exams dr jagannath participated in poets meet and presented his poem at sarnath uttar pradesh in the national level poets meet organized by kannada mathu samaskriti ilake being a member of parisara kendra that is the environmental center he participated in environmental awareness programs for secondary school teachers and students and tree sapling programs he is also sponsoring best student teacher awards in two bed colleges sir has received the chintana gai teacher award and chintana organizing teacher award in 2004-5 sir was honored with karnataka state dr b r ambedkar ratna award for 2018 and indian ideal citizen award karnataka bhushna award and karnataka bhavishya jyoti award in 2019 sir is a founder of jana hita sabha forum an organization for creating educational social cultural and political awareness among the people he is also an advisory board member for the ngo and given valuable suggestions for organizing need based in awareness programs which would be helpful for the society in many spin offs this vision is to india must have one country one education system so that equality can be brought through education system so with this um, introduction i hand over the session to our resource person for today i mean he is all in one a teacher a very enviable uh, person from whom you know any teacher wants to have a profile like this uh, i've seen a very complete 360 degree teacher in him so and also a good human being and what not sir we wish you all a very warm good morning happy morning and we are very happy to have you today with us the floor is all yours sir thank you uh thank you very much for uh, introducing me to the uh audience and uh, uh i must say a very very big thanks to the koimbatore institute of technology for organizing this program and i feel this is a right time to uh think and discuss uh the open book examination uh the other things i will discuss in my presentation and uh, i should take the name of uh, professor uh, manikandan who is a very good friend of mine and uh, uh, i also take the name of dr r jayanti and i am vijay and the chief patron of this program dr s r k prasad and uh, the director of uh, cit institutions mr s raju uh, rangaswamy and uh, the president dr v uh, selladurai for giving me this opportunity to present my views on a need based theme as i can say uh, on open book examination so i begin my presentation with the ppt and i hope you can view my ppt can you view it uh, jayanti madam still not still not visible sir ppt still not visible okay just a minute
Yeah. It's now, now it's visible. Now it's visible, sir. Yeah. Okay. Fine. <clears throat> Shall I begin, sir? Yes, sir. Okay. Fine. So as I was uh, uh, discussing the thing, actually that. Uh, open book examination. A lot of stakeholders from the education background are discussing uh, nowadays that based on uh, the context we are all experiencing on the COVID-19 effect, uh, because uh, we cannot handle the regular classes in the, ex uh, in the classrooms or in the institutions, or we can say the conventional classrooms is highly impossible in this period. And uh, even the examination, which were at the verge of attending by the students in the March or April, and which couldn't happen because of this COVID. And now uh, the stakeholders of education, it may be the policy makers or the teachers and students, mm -hmm. and even the parents are thinking of, uh, why can't we have the open book examination so that the students can bring some of the materials to the examination hall, or they can attend the uh, online examination wherein they can refer a few of the books or resources and they can write the examinations. So before uh, deciding anything related to the open book examination, uh, it is very essential from all, uh, all the stakeholders, a point of view to think what is open book examination is all about so that we can understand it in a proper manner. And we can decide very easily whether this kind of examination be suitable at this moment. So that is the reason why I thought the organizers have uh, kept uh, in mind that this would be an important issue for uh, dissemination of the knowledge in terms of the examination patterns, as well as it is also very essential uh, to all the teachers, especially, to think, can we go with this kind of examination uh, at this moment. So I thought this is a very important thing uh, to understand and discuss at this juncture. So in my presentation, I have brought few questions. And I feel these questions will be addressed definitely in my presentation. And I hopefully at the end of the session, you will be able to answer or understand uh, for these questions as well. And uh, we will be in a position to to know and to decide whether we can have open book examinations at this point of time. And this session is intended to address the questions like uh, what is teaching, learning and evaluation and what kind of relationship they, they all got and what are the issues uh, when we talk about the examination. So whenever we think of examination, certainly we think of certain issues and unless we address those issues, we cannot handle and we cannot execute our examination systems in a proper manner. So those things uh, we will share here, and uh, which is followed by the open book exam. What is the open book exam and what kind of nature it, ha it has got? And uh, uh, just a couple of years back, AICT has decided to implement open book examination in Indian engineering courses. And what guidelines it has been given, that we will see in detail. Uh, which is followed by uh, the empirical research findings around the world a lot of research has been done on open book examination in terms of finding out it, its effectiveness as well as its its lacunas as well as we can say we will see in detail those research findings and later we will uh, uh, see the different types and forms of open book examinations so that we can implement those types of open book examination in our courses and if we feel that there are certain materials which can be used in the open book examinations, then we have to decide what kind of materials need to be allowed to the students so that they can use and write the examinations. We will discuss that aspect as well. And after that, we will dis discuss how the questions would be in the open book examination, because there is a big difference between closed book examination as well as open book examination. So question patterns will also differ from type to type. So we will discuss how the questions can be framed effectively so that we can conduct good open book examinations. And there is a need to design of the exam question papers as well for open book examination. And not only that, assessment is also very different and very unique 
for open book examination. For that, we have to uh, prepare our own rubric for that. So rubrics, we will discuss in detail what is a rubric and what kind of a uh, assessment pattern we can prepare for the open book examinations. And I have brought few uh, model question papers of open book examination, which, uh, which will help you in understanding the pattern and the style of questions as well uh, from different universities. And at the end, uh, I'm going to give you the different challenges, misconceptions, advantages, and disadvantages of open book examination. So uh, hopefully these questions will be solved or you will be able to understand these things at the end of my session. So let me begin with the COVID-19 impact. As we all know that there is a impact on every aspect of life, which we were not expected, which we were not expected all of a sudden, it has created a havoc in the lives of uh, all the uh, uh, citizens across the world and which has impacted on cultural, social, economical, and political dimensions of an individual as well as for the country. And it has also impacted on education too. And that's the reason why we are thinking different aspects of teaching, learning, and evaluation. And if you just see the change in the education sector uh, after this COVID effect, the education or the learning process has become quite individualized, which we were talking all these years that education must be, or the learning must be quite individual and time and places are totally insensitive at this moment. Because anybody from any place of any place, they can attend the classes, they can listen any resource person or any teacher from across the globe. So that change this COVID has brought to the education sector, as, it, as I can say, at least a few aspects, as I can say, the equality has been brought, brought of the resource person in terms of the content which is being delivered, in terms of the number of hours being spent in the learning by the teacher in the teaching sector. So that is a very good aspect from this COVID-19, but it has created a lot of challenges as well. So we will see those challenges as well before uh, this uh, open book examination content so that we can understand very well why and how this open book examination can be adapted and implemented successfully in our uh, co different courses. So we all know that education is nothing but giving the experiences to the students. And how we do it? We do it through teaching. So giving the experiences from teacher's point of view to the learners is nothing but teaching. And taking those experiences from the learner's point of view is called the learning. And whatever teacher prepares or the plans for students learning based on certain set of objectives will be assessed from students point of view in the form of evaluation. So experiences play a very important role in education which are the basis for teaching, learning, as well as evaluation. And nowadays, we are experiencing just virtual as well as online in all kinds of teaching, learning, and evaluation patterns. Wherever we go, whatever we do, it is just online or virtual form. And this online and virtual form has created a lot of challenges as well, as well as it has provided ample opportunities for the teachers as well as for the students in the teaching as well as in the learning process. If you just, uh, just uh, look into the learning ability of teachers ourselves, if you see, we have started learning different uh, the, uh, software. We have started learning different uh, content designing process. We have started preparing new materials in the different forms. So this is a big opportunity which has been provided by this COVID-19. As well as the challenge is which we didn't expect, which has been uh, just came into the picture in the teaching learning process all of the sudden. And that challenge has been uh, given quite opportunities for the teachers also to learn and understand and apply those hardware, software, designing abilities on designing 
the different content in different forms so that we can understand learn and provide that content in a more meaningful manner to the different stakeholders as well as students of our courses so this is how it has created two different ends one is challenge as well as opportunities if you see based on this aspect also there are two important perceptions of teaching since the ages we have discussed teaching in different forms in a perception one if you see what teaching is all about means it is transmitting the information many of the teachers and scholars they say that teaching is just dissemination of information or the central goal of teaching is disseminating the information what we have got what we have understood to the students and what is the role of a teacher passing that information to the students minds it may be from different resources it may be from textbooks and what we expect from students from this perception we expect from students that they have to understand the information they should retain it for longer duration and they have to retrieve that retained information in the final examination so that they can get more marks or good marks in the examination this is one kind of perception we have regarding teaching and we have another kind of perception wherein the teaching is considered as the triggering of mental development it's not just giving the information to the students it is not just understanding the, the knowledge by the students and getting more marks it is something more what is that the true teaching is teaching students how to learn not what to learn making our students how to learn must be the main motto of teaching that is the triggering mental development wherein the teaching should equip the students for what for developing the ability to acquire the knowledge to modify the existing knowledge and to build the new knowledge and not only that whenever the time requires whenever the problem comes they have to apply that available, available knowledge to get the solutions so that's what we say it is it is uh, using the knowledge for making intelligent decisions so that is what triggering mental development is all about so here there is a shift from rote learning to the development of certain mental faculties so this is the important perception regarding teaching we teachers must understand that it is not just passing the knowledge it is not just the development of knowledge among the students it is more than that it is just triggering the mental development among the learners or the students then there are lot of examinations we have conducted in our careers for rote learning as well as for thinking skills but most of the examinations are heavily dependent on eliciting the memorized concepts or extracting or retrieving from the students point of view in terms of assessing their ability in the form of marks so that is rote learning if you if you just think in a different pattern that why can't we assess the students thinking skills rather than just rote learning ability that we have to think of open book examinations these examinations will help us not just assessing students rote learning ability it is also mean to assess the students thinking skills or thinking ability so before going to that it is very essential to understand that evaluation is a part of life it is not new thing a uh, new thing for us of course it is being used in the education process in every sphere every aspect and every dimension we assess so that the, we can say firmly students have performed better in those areas but it's a part of life every situation every relation every new thing undergo evaluation process and that will be done by ourselves and hence we say education is incomplete without evaluation so evaluation is very very important in the education process unless we understand it properly we cannot evaluate if we not evaluate properly definitely our teaching process and learning process will not go into the whatever objectives we have framed in tune to that 
So hence, evaluation is very important. And now the thing comes, we also know that every individual is unique. When we talk about the evaluation system, we have to evaluate individually. So every individual is unique. And we also know that no two individuals are alike. When no two individuals are alike, how can we use same kind of evaluation procedure to all kinds of learners? We have different kinds as well. We know that intelligence theories have been defined and de uh, described the different types of learners. Even our learning theories have been defined different types of learners. And we also know that based on the sense organs, learning happens in different forms in the different individuals. So sense organs based learners are there. Some are kinesthetic, some are visual, some are uh, oral. So different varieties of learners we get. And we also know that brain based learning also categorized the learners. And nowadays, which is quite rampant in most of the developed countries, research is going on in neuroscience of learning. Because the neural uh, organs, which are very important for the learning process, and learners can be described, and types can be made, or classification can be made based on the neuroscience or neurological ability of the learners. When the things are going on in this way, how can we use the same kind of evaluation pattern and the teaching pattern to the students of the same course in the same classroom? So this is a question we should think. And we all know that education system is as good as its evaluation system. So when we fail in evaluation, definitely we fail in the education system. So that is the vitality of evaluation system. And before understanding the examination system, it is also very essential to know these three important terms, measurement, assessment, evaluation. When we understand properly, definitely it helps us in understanding the pattern of evaluation examination. So measurement, you may be knowing this, yes, to assign a quantitative meaning to a quality. Normally we measure in terms of the numbers. We give the scores to a thing. So that is measurement. But the measurement stops at making a value judgment. The measurement will not ma make a value judgment. The value judgment can be done by the assessment because assessment is a fact finding activity that describes conditions that exist at a particular time. So what is the value judgment? Value judgment can be high or low or pass or fail. So this kind of a value judgment can be done based on measurement. This is assessment and the assessment and measurement will help us for the evaluation process. So what is that? It is examining a subject and rating it based on its important features and features can be the criteria as what we fix for the assessment and measurement. So evaluation will help us to draw the conclusions. And not only that, we can also make new predictions based on evaluation. And this is how we can understand very clearly the evaluation will help us in understanding assessment and assessment will help us in understanding measurement. And not only that, measurement will help us for assessment and assessment will help us evaluation process. So we evaluate based on the examination pattern. So examination is nothing but two varieties we have that is closed book examination and open book examination. When we talk about the examination system, all these years, we have undergone a very strict and a particular type of examination that is closed book. What is closed book? Examination will be held, question paper will be prepared for that, and probably two to three hours will be allotted for 100 marks. And students have to come to the examination hall by preparation, and they should not refer any references or textbook in the examination hall. Without that, they have to answer the questions. This is the common pattern of examination we all attended. But this is not same with the open book examination, which is quite controversial as well, which is quite opposite as well. What is that? The basic condition of examination differs 
from closed book examination and some of the people say that is it not cheating from the examinee point of view so that if they refer any of the text in the examination hall what is there is special in writing the answers so there are people they say that yes it is a cheating so hence open book examination should not be allowed so that's a controversial thing we have in the education setup regarding open book assessment or open book examination if we say no how we will discuss in detail in the next slides so before that it is very essential uh, to deal with the open book examination the basic question of open book examination has to answer based on the educational theory unless it is proved that it is good vital and quite apt in the education setup we cannot use it how can we how it can be assessed how it can be addressed yes we have three important points here and we also know that assessment and learning have a complex and symbiotic relationship whatever assessment we do quite it is quite related with the learning and whatever learning happens in the classroom or outside the classroom from students point of view that will be assessed in the examinations so that kind of a close and complex relationship between assessment and learning we find and the open book examination has to answer three important levels of questions as we can say what are those questions the first one is how it is addressing the learning objectives how to scrutinize the learning objectives so that those learning objectives can be adapted quite well in the methods of teaching this is the first one then second question would be it should address what kind of models of learning processes we can execute in the classroom or in the teaching learning process so that the attitudes towards the examination can be developed in a favorable manner second one third one what assessment criteria are stipulated or developed or fixed by the professional regulatory bodies have we defined it in the regulatory bo defined by the regulatory bodies have we defined it in the bos have we addressed these issues in the boe so that we can use it in a comprehensive and quite well manner in the examination so these three important elements which will help us in understanding and addressing the issues of open book examination and to verify that element especially the learning element as we can say yes the great educationist david ossubel has given a very comprehensive and a clear learning theory of meaningfulness in the understanding of the content and he said or he presented his views in the form of meaningful learning theory he says we means the teachers we always deliberately attempt to influence the cognitive structures of the students which means we always try our level best to maximize the meaningful learning ability of the learners not only that if they understand it properly they understand in a more meaningful manner that learning aspect must be retained for or retained for longer duration and that's why he says this meaningful learning and retention are two important elements which he called the heart of educative process he says in any educative process if you feel that there is a meaningful learning then definitely that's a process of education according to david ossobel and he says the idea of cognitive conceptual structure which has developed in his meaningful learning theory so always the existing cognitive structure means whatever knowledge a learner has already gained will always help in gaining new knowledge in 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 in, in clarifying the new concepts in understanding the new concept in a more meaningful manner so that they can pile the cognitive structures very easily and they can have a comprehensive idea of that particular so this is what the idea of david ossubel for learning aspect the reason why i am quoting david ossubel is he said 
learning is not just learning learning is not just memorizing and recalling it is meaningful learning so that they can use the learned information in a new situation so the reason why i am using meaningful learning is meaningful learning is the base for attending open book examinations so unless we make our students to learn in a very meaningful manner we cannot expect that they can write good answers in open book examination and before that actually i have brought two important stories from nobel laureates if you just understand the stories of those two great stalwarts we will come to know what kind of examination systems we have been adopted all these years and where we failed one of the uh, economists his name is john maynard keynes who has got nobel prize as well in economics for his excellent work macroeconomics and his own experience is a big eye opener for all the stakeholders of education who feel that the intelligence is nothing but getting more marks and to begin his story you may be knowing that actually he was the founder of modern economics and based on his theory a school of thought was established which was called keynesian economics and whose ideas of macroeconomics became the policies of many governments around the globe not just in uk around the globe his economic policies have been uh, incorporated or ideas have been incorporated to to improve the economies of the countries and all these ideas whatever he suggested the theories have been put in a book that is called the general theory of employment interest and money which was published in 1936 and later 1930s he became the known or renowned economics in around the globe actually so people started talking about him people started uh, understanding his theory of macroeconomics and started using uh, his theories as well and he is very much related to india as well because he was appointed to the royal commission on indian currency and finance in the year 1926 so he contributed to the indian royal commission of indian currency and finance as well and when he became popular a notable figure in the economic world all the media people started discussing and they went to him to make the interview on his background of life and the biggest surprise all the media people received from him was keynes had scored comparatively lesser marks in economics though he was a nobel laureate though he contributed significantly in economics to the entire world and mankind but he scored less marks in his undergraduate examination that to in economics and all the media people asked they were they were really shocked and uh, that that matter was unexpected for them and they asked the reason why this has happened and he said and i'll quote his words he said all the answers i wrote were pragmatically application based which the evaluators failed to assess properly and consequently i was awarded very poorly i'll repeat it all the answers i wrote were pragmatically application based which the evaluators failed to assess properly and consequently consequently i was awarded very poorly so this was the reason where we feel that yes we failed to assess the writings of a great scholar and that too he has written very application based application oriented answers this is one thing and recently i had an opportunity to attend one of the nobel laureate again sir richard roberts he got the nobel in medicine and physiology he delivered a lecture on the theme the path to the nobel prize he narrated his own life experiences uh, to the audience on that day and based on his presentation i have extracted few points and those points are he said 
fall in love with your subject it is very essential to be successful in your life in your field that unless you fall in love with your subject you will not achieve great heights very good second thing read the things around your subject not just your subject try to collect then read more things which are related to your subject uh, we can say it's a more multidisciplinary manner you should gain the knowledge regarding your subject so that we can understand your subject more comprehensive manner the third one is problem based learning will lead to joyful learning so wherever uh, problems are being posed in the learning process definitely learning would be more joyful and last one never hesitate to challenge us so whenever we come across the challenges in the learning process or in gaining the experiences definitely our experiences would be more resourceful more richness we can bring into that so these are the four elements we can extract and what i presume is definitely what examinations we are having all these years our students never had fallen in uh, love with their subject second thing they only concentrated on the content whatever uh, which has been taught in the classroom or which has been provided in the textbooks they never understood in detail in detailed manner the different aspects different correlated aspects of the subject in a detailed manner that was also missing and we haven't provided lot of problematic situations to the learners in the learning process so that they they might have not uh, uh, felt the joyfulness in the learning process and even we never or we hardly provided the challenges to them in the learning process so here these aspects can be clicked at the right time when we try to adopt the open book examination in our courses and we have some issues also regarding examination whenever we talk about examination whenever we think about examination the only thing which comes to, comes to our mind is peerness stress strain so these are the aspects we these, these are all the negative aspects what we can say there which comes and always issues which are related to like they are very sensitive always suspect on one or another for the fair conduction of examination and lot of monitoring will be there we call them as the policing aspects will be there in the examination and we mental we maintain the confidentiality in the smooth conduction of examination maybe in terms of paper setting it may be in terms of printing or different aspects and we expect lot of objectivity validity and comprehensiveness into the examination system and here the ethics plays very important role from teachers as well as students point of view so we have to consider those aspects as well and nowadays we are using more and more ict based examinations or the processes of examinations which are ict based and there are lot more aspects which come into the picture in terms of issues related to the examinations so how to handle them yes we will discuss in detail in the open book examination yes to say that there are lot of criticisms for closed book examination also we may say that what's wrong in the closed book examination all these years we have implemented it we have adopted it we have got good candidates as well based on that but still we find lot of criticisms on that what are the, those criticisms criticisms are we assess the students based on their mugging up behavior that is not what parroting of lessons to answer the questions of the questions which are presented in the papers whatever they mug up whatever they uh, memorize the things they just come into the examination hall and of uh, retrieve it and write the answers is it true learning is a question then second one we miss analytical ability among the students if you use more closed book examination which is already missing they just memorize it and write it most of the time rather than analyze it apply it and evaluate themselves in the based on the situations and write it something so that is also missing link and absence of communication skill also so lot of students they just memorize and write the things in the different examination rather than uh, uh, rather than understand it and produce it in their own words this is also a big challenge uh, from the closed book examination and even lack of writing ability also 
if you just give a few of the examples or a uh, few of the uh, case studies to the students to write instantly regarding their uh, experiences it will be very difficult for them to write it because they haven't uh, experienced they haven't trained in that fashion so students normally we provide them the notes we teach them in the classrooms with the help of ppts or or any of any other uh, strategies we use and they just read the content memorize it and write it uh, in the examination whatever they have memorized it rather than writing in their own styles and even that is a big important element we should consider is socio familial and life skills these elements are missing in our examination systems and even the problem solving capacity of the students is also limited to some extent so when we talk of uh, talk about these issues in terms of criticisms for closed book examination definitely we can think of the open book examination i as i mentioned that it is not very new to the indian scenario the all india council for technical education aicte has all framed a four member committee in the 2018 to see the reforms in the examination patterns and based on a time gap and analysis from the different views of from the different uh, stakeholders of the aicte background they came to a dis, uh, a conclusion that open book examination must be mandatory or should be mandatory in at least internships and induction training programs for engineering course students and it is not that in every aspect we should use the open book examination they have given an recommend a recommendation that at least it should be used in few of the aspects of engineering courses and wherever it is necessary wherever it is possible we can make use the open book examination in the engineering courses so that is the thing which is are being considered in 2018 itself and this will opened up definitely a new era or new avenue for evaluation system in india at least in engineering as i can say because when we start thinking the open book examination we have to make changes in two different things one we should understand properly what examination pattern would be then second thing how would be the classroom interaction so what would be taught in the classroom and how it would be assessed in the examination so these two important elements we should think prior to the adopting of open book examination in the different courses and it is widely widely acknowledged also assessment drives learning as i was uh, discussing that yes whatever kind of assessment we would like to have at the end of the session definitely based on that the learning pattern the first learning pattern will be planned or designed and based on that students will learn according to the patterns and even the thinking ability of the learners will also be changed based on the assessment we say that you will be having open book examination means naturally students start thinking that how the assessment would be and what would be expected from us so that they can gain uh into that particular insight of the learning pattern and they will prepare themselves they will mold themselves according to the assessment pattern now there is a dry off assessment which leads to the learning pattern and simple memory and recall will not help for open book examinations it requires deep and meaningful learning and when we Uh, when we decide that these kind of examinations will be there at the end of the sessions means definitely expectations would be high from the learners point of view as well as from the teachers point of view the teachers have to make changes in this in their teaching process as well as learners have to change their learning patterns as well they will be motivated highly towards those examinations so that they can perform well and the three important elements which will really help us in successful adaptation of open book examination what are those the first thing is 
we have to adopt the outcome based education framework first not just the process which is outcome based so learning will happen in the process as well as well as in the end examinations so that's what one open book examination is all about so outcome based education framework we have to adopt first then we should give importance to the higher order abilities not just the lower order just memorizing recalling and recognizing is not important beyond that we have to go to a higher extent and expect more thinking abilities from the learners so we should give more importance to that and the third one is we should improve the structure and quality of assessments structure its format as well we have to as well as the dimensions of those qualities have to be improved so these three important elements which which help us in reforming our education system so which has been done in engineering and which we require to be implemented in other fields as well so why to use them as i told yes open book exam requires higher learning ability from the students what you can see here like applying analyzing evaluating and creating those four uh, higher order objectives as we can say given by the bloom benjamin s bloom which has been revised by anderson and krathol in 2001 those four objectives are very important and we have to click those elements in the examination pattern and that examination pattern is quite uh, a replica what we can expect in the open book examination and this is not new as well it is it may be new for india but for uh, different countries it is not new because in hong kong which was introduced in 1935 and they say the open book exam encouraging the thinking at higher cognitive levels from the students yes and they also suggested that this can be practiced at different universities and students are allowed to bring the resources resources in terms of the course materials textbooks as well as the handwritten notes so whatever a course coordinator recognizes so that resource materials can be brought into the examination hall to be used in the examination to write the answers so that is the open book examination we have some research finding also what are those research findings is the jehu and kalish they have conducted research on open book examination and they found out that the open book examination does not lead to higher student achievements achievement means in terms of test scores you cannot expect that if by using the open book examination text text scores would be increased no what you can increase is you can expect sir i'm sorry i'm sorry sir uh, sir uh, uh, would you share the screen once more some of the participants uh, it's uh, something minimized would you please repeat again share the ppt okay am i audible to you audible is very good sir okay fine 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 i request the other participants not please share i think this happened when some of them was shared the screen that's why this happened okay i will stop now and again i resume my okay sir screen share okay sir okay now 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 we are seeing sir Yeah, yeah. The empirical research findings. Okay. Ah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Full screen. Full if possible. Full screen. Yeah. Yeah. Is it okay? Yes, sir. We are we are seeing, but not. Ah, uh, yes, sir. Now we are seeing. Yes, sir. Okay. So uh, I was talking about the empirical research findings. So a lot of research has been conducted on open book examinations. It affects. Uh, how it is affecting and what kind of uh, mental abilities it is going to develop and how it is creating problems as well so in a positive and negative and both the elements have been identified based on empirical researches so once this research is conducted by jehu et al in 1970 and kalish in uh, kalish so they found that 
by using the open book examination you don't expect the high marks in the examination don't expect that students will score more rather you can expect that you, there is a in, increment or there is a improvement of higher order thinking skills among the students so that is a one research finding the same research finding in continuation with that have been conducted by jehu et al michael and weber et al so they found that the open book examination drastically reduces the examination tension so as i was discussing that examination is nothing but a tension activity for all of us so it is creating lot of stresses though we may come across lot of resources we may be very perfect in our content in our reading but still we face we 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 face lot of stress in those situations but open book examination we is comprehensively reducing the tension stress and promotes the fair examination that's what we require we always try to have fair examination in our courses but most of the time we misses we fail to uh, uh, have a fair examination systems but this examination pattern is increasing its effectiveness in having examinations in a more fair manner and the learning leads to of uh, lasting outcomes as well as well as the next study conducted by philius and in 1961 see way back probably 60 years back he has done that he says it is reducing unnecessary rote memorizing of facts so memorizing will be reduced and the students will prepare themselves for more constructive ways so whatever content they learn that learning will be used for longer duration that may be in day to day life situations as well so that kind of applicability open book examination is having we can derive it based on the research findings and one of the important researchers conducted by tussing in 1951 he says this exam is removing the kind emotional block encountered by the students during the examination that speciality so during exam also students will be very fearful and uh, that emotional blockage will be there in writing examinations so that will be removed to a great extent by uh, having open book examinations and in the same time students emphasizes practical problems and reasoning rather than recall of facts so this is a beautiful thing of open book examination and next study conducted by uh, alston and vadermo in 2000 they argued that open book examination encourages greater engagement and improves understanding of course material so that is what we require in the teaching learning processes and feller have found that open book exam is superior to closed book exams why it is more realistic similar to problem solving situations so more problem solving situations can be given in the examinations so that the students whatever information they have gained whatever knowledge they have understood they had that will be used for solving the problems that will be used for coming out with some of the solutions to those problems so that's what uh, superiorness as we can expect from the open book examination if you just see the nature in three or four points every exam is having a different pedagogical lens closed then a closed book and open book naturally so open book is ideally suited for the programs that aims at developing the skills of critical and creative thinking if you are expecting from your students the critical thinking ability and creative thinking ability definitely open book examinations will be quite apt and in a broader sense this exam will allow the students to consult some of the reference materials yes reference materials are very important to write these examinations and those materials will be listed allowed by the course coordinator and sometimes they uh, those materials may be class notes textbooks and other approved materials so approval is very important from the course coordinator so that those approved materials can be used in the examination hall and we have two types of open book examinations one is restricted type and other is unrestricted type the term itself indicates which means some kind of restriction will be there in the restricted type 
and some kind of unrestriction will be there in the unrestricted type. What is that restriction? Restriction of using the reference materials is the base. In a restricted type of examination, documents must be approved by the course instructor so that the approved materials can be used, not any other materials than the approved one, so that the examinations can be written, which means sometimes the handwritten materials are not approved by the course coordinators in these kinds of examinations. So they will not be allowed to use in the examination. So whatever approved materials are there, they can be brought into the examination hall and can be used quite easily and no restrictions at all. So, so this restriction is called restricted type of open book examination. Only approved materials can be used, no other materials. And these documents can also act as the appendices to the question paper, which means you get a question paper in the appendix, there will be a list of uh, approved materials only those approved materials can be used in the examination hall. And the second one is unrestricted, that is quite opposite to it, free to use, free to bring any kind of material, whatever students like to use in the examination. Maybe books, maybe lecture hand notes, or even the own handwritten notes as well. Okay, but here, uh, how to prepare the questions for unrestricted type of examination is important because uh, the approval is not there actually, which means any kind of material can be used. It means it will be it would be a difficult task for the learners also to the uh, examiner examinees also to use what kind of material will be useful in the examination. Also. They may not be knowing. So that's the reason why it is very essential to highlight the kind of questions they will be asked prior to the examination, maybe in the classrooms it has to be discussed well so that the students can bring the related material to the examination hall and we have two forms of examinations also in open book one is traditional sit down exam and the second one is limited time exams so tra traditional sit down exam as well as limited time which means time is limited here normally examinations will be having in three hours isn't it so that time is limited for this kind of exam. So within that time, the students will bring the materials to the examination hall and write the answers. But the second variety is take home exams. So no restriction of time. Restriction of time means whatever exams will be given on a particular day, the students ha have to write the examinations, maybe in their homes, but they have to return those answers on the next day so that the validity or genuineness can be assessed or addressed. So it is not that they can keep with the uh, with them the question papers for uh, any, any sort of time they can use to write the answers. It is not like that. So traditional and limited time is stipulated time, which will be examined in a particular institution. Students have to go to the examination center and write the answers in a stipulated time. But take home exams, they can take the question papers to the homes, they can write in their homes, but naturally, next day they have to present or submit the answer scripts. So, this is how examinations can be conducted in two forms also. Two varieties restricted and non restricted, two forms traditional and take home exam. And what kind of materials can be used is a big challenge. How to decide it? So this can be decided based on the course, based on the course coordinator, one who's teaching. Or we can say a group of teachers who can sit together and decide what would be the ideal text or the content which can be allowed to be used by the students in examination halls. So naturally, the materials can be your notes, means the students' notes, the readings, reference materials or the textbooks and sometimes uh, uh, for engineering students as I can say or the uh, students of mathematics subject equipments like calculators can be allowed to use to be used and the drafting tools as well based on the need based on the type of question you give and even the materials which will be used in the take home exams are usually unrestricted restriction will not be there for that kind of exam 
and take home exams must be the students work must be the students work means naturally we expect the answers from students handwritten or handwriting so that is the important thing we should keep in mind otherwise anybody can type and anybody can uh, uh, answer or they can copy it from the internet or from the different sources and they can write the answers that will not work that will not be claimed that a genuineness of the examination so hence in most of the cases for take home exams the handwritten responses will be expected and what kind of questions can be asked as we we are all the, uh, thinking that yes it is the problem based questions problem based questions naturally uh, the students can argument students can come out with certain solutions students can analyze and synthesize something out of their knowledge and experience and they can write answers so the questions which elicit the problem solving ability the questions which elicit the solutions for a problem can be very good questions in open book examination so and it depends on the faculty and subjects as well uh, how to give it actually some kind of a case study uh, based questions can also be given in the open book examination so that the students can understand it students can feel that what would be the uh, ideal situation for them to to opine and to to uh, find the solutions to a particular context or a situation so that kind of question can be uh, asked in the open book examinations so what are the considerations for designing open book exams yes design your questions and overall exam paper what you would like to have what you would like to assess from students is important means what kind of skills you assess what kind of knowledge you assess what kind of abilities you are expecting from your students must be the base of setting of paper in the examination and the questions yes questions should assess the interpretation ability application ability comprehension of those skills as well as the critical thinking skills so these skills can be assessed in a more comprehensive manner so that we can frame good questions in the open book examination and a case based exam will be a ideal one to give and to ask to the students so that they can respond in their own way and they can reason out they can uh, uh, critically think and respond to the particular case and uh, see that uh, unambiguous questions must be asked in the open book exams the reason why is when you ask ambiguous questions students may not be in a position to understand it properly when they start uh diluting and they start not able to understand properly means it creates lot of confusion among the learners and they may uh, they, they they may start thinking in a different diversion as i can say in a different way and each and every uh, uh student may write their answers in a different matter uh, patterns as well as in different styles as well so at least unambiguously if you prepare questions means the question would be very easily understood by the learners by the examinees and so that they can answer clearly to the question so that is very important uh, for uh, framing the question in open book examination and the information whatever they have brought with them for writing examination must be useful that is also very important because when we ask a question in the question means they should be able to identify the answer they must be able to identify the solutions few at least few in the book that they can uh, use those material concepts in the learning in the writing examinations uh, so that it will be easy for them so unless we provide few hints few cues as we can say for making them to understand the questions and making them to derive the responses from different sources we cannot expect good responses from students point of view in these examinations and we have some exa examples also in designing uh, these uh, questions for open book examination try to provide the background information on a topic it is it must be very clear that on what background 
you are asking this question so that they can extract the uh, response or extract the content from the book and write the answers second one present the relevant qualitative or quantitative data sometimes some statistics uh, can be given in the examination so that they can understand they can analyze and they can interpret based on that statistics so based on those also we can ask some questions like what does the data show uh, what relevance does this data or does the scenario have in terms of different things and what other factors could potentially affect this data how would you test for this so these are the different forms of questions you can ask if you provide some of the qualitative as well as quantitative data in the question paper i always structure your question paper in such a manner that it should help the examinee to assess the ability to apply to analyze to evaluate to create to synthesize and to interpret something so this should be the motto of any question in the uh, open book exams and socratic questions will help us in framing the questions what are those questions yes clarification of questions assumption questions reason and evidence questions origin or source questions implications and consequence questions and viewpoint questions so here you find the examples as well for those types of questions we can make use these kinds of questions in the open book examination question paper and the bloom's taxonomy which will help us as i was uh, describing you that yes benjamin s bloom who has given the six levels of objectives which can be used not for teaching which can also be used for evaluation as well and till today most of the teachers in almost all fields from elementary education to higher education most of the teachers will use these six levels of cognitive objectives to design their teaching as well as to design their question paper as well and these the the above level as we can say or uh, the applying analyzing evaluating and creating the higher level cognitive object to be most useful in the open book examination question paper setup and here we are having those six varieties of objectives they are presented in a hierarchical manner from knowledge or knowing to creating and what can be asked yes students are asked to do that for knowing it is recalling the knowledge for understanding demonstrating something applying analyzing examining different concepts evaluating making judgments and creating developing something new through the questions and example questions are also provided here and in i have taken this snap from uh, the very report which has been provided by aict so they told that actually the below three levels remembering understanding and applying can be used for fixed r that is uh semester end examinations and the above level objectives can be used to assess course projects mini projects minor projects as well as capstone projects so not only that they have also prescribed that wherever it is possible use open book examination as one of the pattern to assess the students of engineering courses and some of the criteria which will help us to design good open book examination set the question that information is available to the students this is very important we should see that if the information is available to the students then only set the question otherwise students may not be able to answer your questions in the open book examination second one questions must be straight forward prepare the preliminary questions so that students can understand in a very comprehensive and clear manner third one to uh, to to organize the examinations to conduct the examinations because students come to the examination hall with lot of information to lot of hard copies resources with them so hence they may require larger desks larger desk to keep those materials so hence uh, the 
uh, the value must be big and enough time must be provided for students to take the examination normally the open book examination duration will be higher than the closed book examination because students have to refer many resources to write the answers so they require extra time to search the information from different sources so naturally the examination duration pattern would be increased for open book examinations and set up the appropriate marking criteria marking is very important so we require rubrics for that actually you may be knowing what rubric is rubric is all about many of the teachers are using online rubrics for grading their students uh, through online assessment uh, we can also call it as the criteria sheet the grading scheme or scoring scoring grades uh, rubrics can be called with the different names as well so it is a type of scoring guide in a simple uh, manner we can understand it as a scoring guide that assesses and articulate the specific components and expectations for an assessment what is expected what grades will be there for a different kind of competencies if you assess those and allot allot those marks means that is nothing but rubric it is kind of a scoring guide and using rubrics must have three important components again what is that rubric requires criteria criteria means the performance indicator what you would like to assess is performance second one descriptors descriptor is nothing but the characteristic that associated with the dimension means what character you are expecting from that dimension is descriptor and the third one is scale or level of performance level means what do you, what you would like to rate if a performance is being given in a particular manner rating is it good very good some kind of ratings we may be having or excellent so every rubric consists three important components criteria descriptor and scale or level of performance here you find all those three levels so one is marking rubrics you find here the comprehension synthesis application three varieties are there in the other end you find excellent proficient average and poor and the third element you find the description as well so like that descriptors dimensions and scales three varieties of components are required for making a rubric this is another variety so here you find 0 5 10 50 they are the points you can consider them as the scales as well for what for different categories for content graphics and visuals and references for example if so if we take a zero as an example if somebody has given accurate fact regarding the infographic selection color shape size arrangement or the distracting or misleading and the references only one or zero references have been given so they will be awarded zero marks if a candidate has written at least two accurate facts and two facts have sources then the candidate will be awarded 5 marks or 5 points if it is 3 10 marks if it is 4 15 marks so this is how you can create the scores as well so the categories levels and descriptions so each rubric comprises these three important elements so this rubric is very important for the assessment of answers given in a open book examination so another example i have brought from northern illinois university they have designed it for history paper like just poor good excellent and criteria is maybe the number of sources historical accuracy organization and bibliography and they have given the descriptor as well only 1 to 4 it is poor 5 to 9 it is good 10 to 12 it is excellent so like that you can uh, prepare your own descriptors as well for each and every question of open book examination 
and here are some of the guidelines which will help you uh, in preparing the rubric so elements or the critical attributes are very important how you measure it first decide that thing and what range of performances you are going to give whether it is good and unsat uh, satisfactory or excellent that criteria we should develop or decide then how to describe it the description level is also very important so that you can assess the performance of the students so each these three important components have to be designed and decided properly and the next thing is we should avoid some subjective criteria what are those interesting creative these subjective criteria must be removed there should not be any subjective criteria in the rubric of open book examination question paper and the uh, the criteria must be clearly differentiate from one performance to other means one level to other level there must be a clear differentiation in terms of the criteria and according to that the numerical scale should be allotted means the numbers must be allotted correctly and draft of the rubric you should prepare and show it to your colleagues so that you can get the feedback from the colleagues first second thing train your students also show the same rubric to your students also so that they will come to know what is expected from the examination and what they have to learn what they have to answer in the examinations so take the feedback from your students as well and rework on the rubric and make it the final one so that you can use it for assessment of students so here are some of the sample questions i have brought based on the bloom's taxonomy level yes remembering that is lowest level understanding second level few questions applying third cognitive level and next analyze evaluate and create and here you find one of the pro forma as we can say the question paper of kings london university uh they had done it in summer 2016 and uh, few uh, instructions are also given answer any four of the following questions among 10 and limited open book examination uh, you may refer to your own unannotated copy so there are instructions being given and they also ask to write the new answer in a new page and they should write legibly so those are the instructions given there in the second frame you find two questions that is related to engineering this examination is open book and notes you must answer all the questions it is assumed that you have agreed uh, to produce your answers without the consultation of any other person or academic services show your calculations means they have to do the calculations there time allotted is 1 hour 15 minutes and each problem carries 10 marks what efficiency law is analyzed in power plants or energy cycles to compare how close the system to the ideal efficiency so such kind of questions can be asked in the open book exam so the broad pattern we can have something like that not not exactly the same just a broad pattern i'm giving based on the Uh, different patterns of question papers wh what i have come across question number 1 may be 50 marks uh, it may be based on the case study ranging from 1800 to 2000 words and question number 2 probably 30 marks again based on the study of regulatory framework and question number 3 to 6 yes 5 marks each regarding uh, the topics which you cover uh, from the syllabus and the instructions are also given very particularly not allowed to consult their fellow examinees they should not consult they and even they should not exchange their study materials as well whatever materials they bring with them only be used for themselves there should not be any sharing of materials there should not be any consulting with other fellow examinees so candidates are prohibiting bringing such devices also laptop devices the uh, palm top mobile phone and they are not allowed if it is required you can allow but this is a common platform uh, and pattern which i have uh, come across 
and however they are permitted yes the battery operated noiseless and cordless pocket calculators uh, with not more than six functions 12 digits and two memory so that kind of specification they have given if questions are related to that particular aspect otherwise the devices are not required and impact on learning strategies this is very important see when we are talking about open book examination when we see that it is very good and we can implement then the problem arises what learning strategies must be so that we can train and we can create awareness among the learners first unless we create awareness among the learners open book examinations will not be so successful so promoting that right mental set is very important among the learning first okay then students have to shift from uh, memorizing the concept into understanding it in a deeper manner so that they can use that learned material in a more uh, application oriented in a new situation so that attitude change is also required from teachers as well as students point of view and students must be uh, uh, adequate to understand this setup also because when we introduce a new set of examination uh, it may create a lot of havoc and uh, disturbances among the learners those who are going to attend the examination unless uh, uh, it will be clear to them they will not understand properly they will not start learning properly they will not start practicing how to answer it also so these are the things uh, unless we handle them in a very practical manner this open book examination will not be so successful and definitely all the researchers which have been conducted an open book examination have told that the open book examination would be definitely a pleasurable learning activity for all the learners not just in the learning uh, classrooms they also learn in the examination also this is what the research findings have identified from the open book and impact on teaching strategies also teachers have to change their teaching styles just uh, giving the notes just giving lectures will not be so helpful for the learners to analyze apply and uh, judge something on the content so we should change our teaching strategies we should use more and more illustrations into the uh, classrooms we should provide ample opportunities for the students to discuss to analyze to come out with certain responses so that they can conclude themselves in the classroom itself so these kinds of student oriented learner oriented or learner based uh, teaching strategies are very much important which must be applied and adopted by the teachers in the classroom so if we not execute well in the classroom definitely we cannot make our students to understand that concept and we cannot expect that they can perform well in higher order mental ability questions so this is what required from teachers point of view also so these are some of the challenges we should address what is that setting the open book examination question requires lot of training we cannot prepare all of sudden the question related to the open book examinations we have to go through in detail the content we handle in the classroom the experiences we provided in the classroom and the activities we have given to the students so that they can well versed in those activities and if the same kind of experiences given in the examination they can come out with certain uh, answers or the judgments so this is very important and knowledge of basic facts still important we should understand more and more in relation to the content which we handle the content which we teach to the students then third one practice is very important we have to practice we have to write lot of questions we have to prepare our own question bank then we should sit together with the all colleagues so that we can discuss each and every question its formation its style its expectation from the students so that we can reedit it we can refine it and we can prepare a final form of a question bank so practice is required and direct reading as well as extended reading this habit is very important from teachers from students point of view so all these years they have only read the content which is related to the syllabus but now they have to read the extended reading as well that's what sir richard robert says 
we should learn you should read comprehensively which is related to your subject so that is expected in the open book exams so it is a big challenge as well unless we train our students how to go for extended reading uh, they cannot come out with lot of understanding of the content and literature also said that generally the advantages of open book examination students relied less on rote learning it's a very good thing their anxiety about examination was reduced great thing factual knowledge was still learned it is very much required and learning occurred during examination as well so all the years we thought that only learning happens in the classroom not in the examination hall no the open book examinations will provide ample opportunities for students learning in the examination and there are misconceptions we have to Uh, we can change our attitude also in terms of these means consumptions. What are those open book exams are breeze? Breeze means it's very easy. Why it is easy? Straightforward. The students bring the material to the examination hall, and whatever questions come, they just copy it from the book. So this is a misconception. Most of the teachers find student fraternity is having no. This is absolutely wrong. Just copying from the book will not be expected in the open book examination. It is something more than that. What I do, I am just using the rectangle rule, and I see that I am just clicking, click. Then second one is you don't have to study. No, it is also a misconception because open book examination requires lot of study habits, lot of understanding the concepts requires. even more than the closed book examination unless and until the students understand properly all the concepts all the content whatever they have collected for open book examination or writing examinations they will not be knowing which content is there in which book so hence they have to study more and even how best they quickly identify and locate the relevant information is also very important for writing good answers in the open book examination so what we expect is it is also a misconception that students need not to be study they have to study more it is exactly reverse and you can just copy straight from the book it is also wrong so reproducing is not expected here unless a student understands and write the answer so more application oriented questions will be asked in the open book question paper so naturally students have to find out interpret and apply the information so that they can write answers in their own way so this is what required and the fourth misconception is the more material the better it is also wrong they may bring lot of materials lots of materials if they bring means that will not going to help them so stacking the book is not important just understanding what content is there in a particular resource and how best they can make use those resources in the examination hall is the matter of concern so just bringing more material is not going to be useful for the examinees so these four misconceptions we have to change we have to remove from the students and what advantages we have yes the reference material allows more freedom and flexibility to the learners to the uh, examinees so that they can write their own answers in their own way second one higher order skills are expected naturally and they stop the rote memorization the cramming the information will be stopped from the students point of view they start understanding they start reproducing in a new manner and it permits more realistic exam questions you can ask any way you want or whatever way you want what you expect from the students can be asked exactly in the uh, question paper with the help of open book examination and multi step problems can also be given here or else the extended work can also be given for example think that few assignments you have provided to the students in the classroom and in continuation with that the few examples or few questions can be asked in the open book so that whatever experience they had 
in writing the assessment assignments or doing the assignments can be extended in the open book examinations as well and here uh, which will encourage the new learning strategies also so new learning strategies students will be having they start learning in a different manners they start learning in a more depth manner so that whatever information they have that information can be used in new situations and even information retrieving skill also be developed among the students they can easily identify they can easily retrieve the information presented in different books or different resources that skill also be developed among them and which will be focused more on knowing how to use the information rather than just reproducing it so every student will be knowing that how to make use of the available information in different sources in different contexts in different situations so these are the vital advantages we are having out of this open book examination so we are having to disadvantages also like much emphasis on the reference material students may feel that instead of attending the classes regularly attentively they may think that reference material is important because they are going to help us in the examination again it's a wrong notion can be called as a disadvantage and don't need to study because they can underestimate that uh, however we are getting a chance to uh, locate the information in the examination hall so no need to study from students point of view it may be it may be a disadvantage and workload may be included from teachers as well as students point of view because students have to collect information from different sources they should keep ready for the examination not only collecting they have to read each and every book every resource every text which will be going to useful in the examination so naturally workload will be increased from students point of view from instructor point of view yes again they have to prepare lot of material for themselves prepare material for students they have to assess each and every minute aspect in the process of teaching as well as at the end product of teaching so that the workload of content workload of assessment workload of designing the content will be increased so naturally the workload of students and instructors will be increased and depending on the reference material being used limited desk space may not be may be a problem yes uh, it would be a very difficult task if we if you use the unrestricted type of open book examination student may bring hundreds of copies of no of notebooks or textbooks to the examination hall means to accommodate all those resources on the benches or on the desk will be a difficult task so that can be a disadvantage if we will having that kind of examination system and the reference material may not be available to all the students yes few students may be having different varieties of resources but may not be to all the students so this can also create among the students having uh, the disappropriate accumulation of resources in terms of textbooks in terms of resource materials for that particular course so if you just uh, come across all these disadvantages and the if we uh, go through in detail and uh, try to have a clear picture or clear structure for having good open book examination definitely we can uh, conduct good open book examinations so this is the final thing which we have to consider for the implementation of open book examination we require certain regulations regulatory part which means unless we prepare clear regulations for these kinds of examinations uh, this exam type of examination cannot be used in the uh, in the normal courses so we should be clear whether we are using the open book examination for the single course or for entire semester single course means for single subject so that has to be decided first in terms of preparing the regulation and next point is the type of examination we are going to give it to the students whether for restricted or unrestricted what kind of variety we are using it then third one 
the forms of examination whether limited or take home and next one the kind of materials will be accepted in the examination hall means the approved materials that has to be there and kind of questions what kind of questions you are going to prepare have you prepared any special dimension wise ratios or in terms of the hierarchy levels of bloom's taxonomy that has to be fixed clearly and even the pattern of question paper what would be the structure of your question paper has to be defined and last one your rubric that is assessment tool so these are the seven important regulatory elements which have to be decided properly and made as regulations in your courses so that we can use the open book examination effectively and efficiently so that we can expect lot of positives from education not just from teacher and not uh, from the student it is from the entire education system and i hope you have got uh, the idea of open book examination uh and whatever questions we had in the beginning uh, hopefully you have come across and uh, you will be able to understand and answer the questions uh, at this moment if any questions are there from the participants we can take so good morning sir yeah uh, sir and dr kavita from anna university uh so you are able to hear me sir yes sir uh so you have uh, really given a comprehensive uh, study on the uh, open book examination strategies and it was quoted with various re uh, references it was a very nice presentation sir sir i had some thoughts when you were giving the presentation uh so how far are we from this kind of presentation uh now actually in india uh, though we have different strategies for examination open book examination is not very widely used so that was one of the thought and uh, will this be a supplement to the existing system or will it come in, come into practice later or maybe a few years later at a full uh, stretch so that was one of the thought i had and then uh, with respect to teaching since i am a teacher uh, i think uh, teachers should have a good experience before they start to conduct such examinations so maybe uh, initial stage uh, very young, young faculties may not be able to set question paper which which the students can think critically so that was also a thought that came to my mind so you have any um, uh, ideas on this sir yeah uh, quite exactly you have pointed out see after this covid everybody started thinking of open book examinations without understanding its nature and prospects the reason why uh, i was very curious in addressing this session is based on the presentation you might have understood that it is not a one time affair which we can use just in a covid period which is a long time process unless and until we understand the process and the nature of open book examination it's highly impossible to use it in a one setup or in a one go and before implementing this kind of examination see we have different strategies of examination different varieties of examination we have understood that actually this is a kind of examination so the reason why i quoted two examples from great laureates the nobel laureates isn't it though they were contributed significantly to the mankind the assessment pattern was wrong with wrong with themselves in their pertinent life they fail to score they fail to uh, under uh, make understood by the teachers is it what caliber they had so what we expect is see we have restricted our evaluation process to a particular set of objectives if you think just beyond that as i was uh, uh uh just giving you uh six varieties of objectives given by blue we always concentrate more on the lower level objectives and we can claim that in few of the aspects we have also high, uh, uh, assessed our students in 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 terms of creativity in terms of 
analysis and uh, evaluation also for what extent we have assessed is important and that too at higher level the main goal of higher education is enhancing the individual ability the application ability of an individual in relation to that particular domain what he is studying or what she is studying isn't it so in such a manner if you think these open book examinations play a very important role now all the teachers we have to think in this, this direction that to how many years still we have to maintain the closed book examinations those it has got lot of issues when we when we talk about examination there will be issue of cheating there will be issue of copying isn't it that's a one the small aspect i'm telling you so instead of that few aspects can be assessed through closed book exam and few important vital aspects which we require to be assessed at higher education level the ideal way of assessing is open book examination why india is not producing good nobel laureates means that is one of the reason i'm telling you not only one reason that may be one of the reasons we haven't produced our learners in a such a manner that they can apply they can judge they can evaluate they can come with their own solutions to the existing problems which are prevailing in their subjects so hopefully uh, this will help us so what how we can start is uh, unless we have a clear regulatory suggestions we will not imply it we will not apply it okay so first we should uh, use these uh, elements in the regulatory bodies they should prepare it they should design the regulations so that we can start thinking on that and lot of training programs are required so unless we teachers are being trained in this kind of a, a strategy we will not come out good in in terms of teaching in terms of assessment in terms of preparing the question papers so every aspect is important so as i uh, mentioned that aict he has rightly taken a good initiation in two in 2018 and engineering teachers have already started thinking and they have a uh, few of the uh, colleges have already adopted uh, the semester end examinations also but few uh, institutions they have adopted uh, uh, in the project based assessments so continuous and comprehensive evaluation is also being done with the help of uh, the open book examination style as well as the semester end examinations so the rest of the courses uh, also need to be implemented such kind of examination patterns at least in few semesters not for all at least in a trial basis if you apply it for a few semesters definitely this will bring a great change great change in terms of teachers teaching ability and even learners learning ability also definitely we can expect lot of good things from uh, students thank you so much sir we will try to explore it sir. thank you sir hello hello sir uh, good afternoon hello am i audible sir yes sir yes please sir actually i am uh, dr prithish vera from central university odisha korapot actually you had whatever you have explained that is really very very exhaustive and uh, very difficult to implement but the my point of actually concern is uh, can it be applied for the students from standard 1 to 10 but because whatever you had discussed that is uh, for only for engineering or post graduate students professional courses which can be where it can be clearly applied but uh, because right now in this covid pandemic actually it has been a need of the hour for the students those who are in the high school or even and the standard 1 and standard 2 also they are also into this online teaching so uh, what is your opinion about it whether it can be implemented at this open book examination okay sir uh, uh, all my presentation was uh, based on the higher education and uh, as per my knowledge is concerned and uh, the kind of uh, reviews i have made based on open book examination uh, this kind of examination would suit most of the time to the ug and pg students 
or you can say the higher education students because the analytical ability the judgment and evaluation pattern of skills will be expected naturally after plus 2 level till till the uh, secondary level we can train our students up to analysis part or else you can say the application part so till till that level we can reach and uh, it would be uh, it will it may not be quite apt i as i can say to use these kinds of exams for secondary students so after secondary schools or else you can say the plus 2 level would be quite apt to implement these kind of examinations so till plus 2 yes the normal examination pattern but but as i told few uh, project based activities right now we are giving actually project based activities and uh, 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 the unrestricted uh, kind of a examination patterns whatever we are giving now at the secondary level as well students are making use those resources and writing the uh, assignments as well so up to that level it fits but plus 2 level this will fit into a, a, a good arena as i can say but before that uh, i don't feel uh, that would fit most mostly to the secondary level thank you sir thank you very much jayanti madam i would request the other participants to interact it's a good chance hello hello yes yes uh, hello good afternoon sir i am dr meena from uh, vijaya teachers college bangalore yes madam sir in our uh, bed colleges how can we do online exam online exam theory paper is okay sir we have to organize the practical also no yes madam in this situation how can we do sir? uh the open book examination pattern is not just for year end or semester end exam madam we have forms also okay sir so we should come out with a idea how to make use this kind of a evaluation system in our bed courses there are a lot of opportunities so every course will be having a different set of assignment activities yes sir it is a take away uh, uh, take home uh, kind of a assignment what we give it is also a form of an open book exam okay i if think that there are four semesters uh, in a bed course means why can't we have at least one or two semester and examination on the open book pattern okay not all actually isn't it at least at least one or in initial stages we can give uh, any one of the semester and exam Okay, as an open book so that so that our uh, prospective teachers will come to know what kind of examination pattern and how to locate the information and how to write more analytical based answers so that would be a very good opportunity for uh, the prospective teachers in turn they will be using uh, the same kind of examination patterns in their teaching learning process as well okay thank you sir Okay, if no questions are there, Jainti Madam. Uh, I think uh, Jainti Ma'am is also there, but uh, I, if uh, I think we can, uh, if no question, we can finish the session. And it was very nice, sir, and uh, good. Uh, uh, appreciate. Uh, we can get in the chat. We can feel the well, it's a nice one. So I really thank you so much, sir, for your uh, nice presentation and very cool. And we feel uh, the values. even we can feel how much we miss in our life while we studying like this so what i remember this is one of the important things and one of the point, one of the professor also point out why not for the we can try for school so i think uh, this thought process all this roughly some 100 parties uh, professors were here so they were all scattered in all the places it will be a good effect in coming future
so on behalf of uh, all the participants and the uh, cit tlc i once again thank you so much sir it's a very nice wonderful session and good inspiration for all of us so thank you so much sir so very big uh, thanks from my side also for making this event a really a grand success one thank you very much for all the dignified participants thank you sir thank you so much on behalf of cit tlc i also wish to thank our resource person for his time with us and valuable inputs given to us and uh, before leaving the session as a request to participants to fill up the feedback form for e certificates the form will be closed within 10 minutes so kindly fill the form and then leave the session so that you will be able to get your certificates we uh, we are very particular about not giving certificates to people who don't attend so please uh, fill the feedback form for your certificates uh, thank you sir thank you participants you have been an amazing audience thank you so much thank you janti ma'am thank you sir thank you uh, ma'am uh, i want to know about your website where we can get the further information about your webinar is there any website of your institution but uh, help sir actually right now our website uh, admins are uh, not like we were unable to update what we are doing is that whatever webinars we are having we post it in the faculty plus we we regularly post it in the faculty plus website so when you watch that space you will be able to know all uh, the updates of all our upcoming programs a uh, faculty plus website event post it ma'am uh, this website link uh, sir i just go to google and type faculty plus and you will get the website and we we post in we post all our upcoming programs in that in the events section there's the events section in the google you can just type faculty plus it's a common platform for the faculty jobs and other things and we are using that platform right now because our admins are not uh, uh, i mean we are unable to contact our admins right now for uh, uploading we are using the common public platform Okay. Please fill the feedback form before you leave the session. Thank you. Hello, madam. Uh, hello. Yes, sir. Ah, uh, hello, madam. Can we get the video or PPT of this uh, session? Uh, sir, For PPT. Our... I'll request the resource person, sir. If resource person is willing to share, I'll share, sir. Uh, videos. Uh, yes. Uh, for all the people you just put uh, in the chat that you require the video we will send the video to you sir yeah i have already sent a mail to you sir madam uh, and if no issues. you okay okay madam no issues or we I will right give now... the video sir yes sir thank you thank you madam we will send it to your mail only yeah thank you thank you okay sir